Hello and welcome to another TFB Spotlight interview. And today's interview is with my special guest, Cindy Hovig, and she is from Beyond Balance Books, Inc. in the Bay Area of California. And she's going to tell us her story from starting her business to where she is now. And just to give you a little taste of the journey she's been on in 2016, she was named the Zero Bookkeeping Partner of the Year for the United States. So Cindy has come a long way and I can't wait to hear her story. So thank you, Cindy, so much for joining us for the interview. Thank you for having me, Gabrielle. <laughs> well, why don't we just jump right in because I know you have a lot to share. Um, please give us a little background on yourself and why you decided to even start a bookkeeping business. And how long ago was that, that you started? Okay, well, it was in the dark ages. So it was in 1990 is when I actually started my uh, bookkeeping business. Mm -hmm. And I had kind of fallen into bookkeeping. Um, the first class I took a sophomore in high school, mm -hmm. fell in love with uh, bookkeeping, gobbled up everything that they had to offer um, through school, vocational school, and even some college courses as well. And so then in 1990, I was a young mom with two small children, and my husband um, is a landscape contractor, and there was a drought in California. And so the plan was for me to wait until I would go, until our children were in school before I would go back to work. But all of a sudden, it was like, okay, it's time for you to go back to work. Mm -hmm. So. My husband is very entrepreneurish, and so he's the one who encouraged me to start my own bookkeeping um, business. That's when it started, a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So, and it, it was just because you needed it for the family, right? Yes. Okay, excellent, thank you. So what would you say when you were getting started, what was the biggest challenge that you had in getting the business going? I think the biggest challenge was confidence. So uh, I had experience, but of course, I had never sold myself, you know, to mm -hmm. someone, so that was really a big challenge. And getting those first couple of clients, of course, you know, um, it was challenging as well. And just figuring out how to go about this. I really had no resources whatsoever. I didn't have anyone that was doing this sort of thing to talk to. I didn't know about any resources, so I was kind of on my own. Yeah, yeah, very good. So how did you get those first few clients? So, okay, we're talking a long time ago. Yep, yep. So no, I, actually, I understand. I started right around the same time you did. <laughs> so I actually um, hired a graphics person to do a little brochure for me. So I had a little brochure. I got some business cards and took out an ad in the yellow pages. Okay, yep. So that's not the way you would go about it today. Right. And then also let the word be known among people that I was acquainted with. And so, oh, I went to chamber, went to S, you know, the small business development, all those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. But I think my first real break came from like a friend of a friend hired me, mm -hmm. and they really liked me, and then they, you know, told a few other people, and it just went from there. Mm. And it was just you, right? Just solo at that point, because you had little little yeah. kids too. Yeah, I had little kids. It was very part time. Mm -hmm. I would work, you know, while they slept, and you know, sometimes in the in the evening or when they were taking naps, you know, that sort of thing. So it started off really part-time and then it took a few years. So when I started, my youngest daughter was a year and a half. Oh, she was little. And then by the time that she was in third grade, so that's a pretty long time, mm -hmm. um, it was full time. And mm -hmm. so it just gradually built up, you know, over that period of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Could I ask you an extra, um, because you were starting home-based and you had small children, what kind of challenges did you face with that, running a home-based business? Well, one of the things was having the right space in my home to do mm -hmm. the work. Mm -hmm. And since I've been doing this for so long, you know, more than 25 years, I've had different situations, you know, lived yep. in different houses and things. But really setting myself up so that I could go to work having a door to shut yes. so that I could talk on the telephone and not be interrupted mm -hmm. and 
not sharing that space with anyone else. You know, at one mm-hmm. time I tried to share my office with my husband. That didn't work well. <laughs> yeah. The habits that weren't set up. Another time we were remodeling and I had to temporarily have my office set up in the kitchen. That did not work well. Mm. So finding just the right physical space. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. That's really important as well. Um, what tip, is there any kind of a tip that you wish someone had told you or, or any kind of a guidance that you wish you had looking back now in where you are in your business? Oh, yeah, there's so many. So mm-hmm. one is I certainly didn't charge enough. Mm-hmm. Um, I had no idea how to you know, charge for services. So I wish somebody could have helped me, you know, like there's so much information now about doing fixed pricing and value pricing and that sort of thing. Mm I started strictly by the hour and was way, way too cheap. Uh, I think that making sure to know like what your personal, I guess, um, boundaries are that, you know, over the years, you know, at times like I took on too many things. trying to find that balance or over promising things that meant I almost killed myself to get something done where if I had just, you know, said I can't get that to you until next week, I mean, almost probably 95% of the time the client would be fine with that. And but sometimes we feel like we have to be, you know, almost perfect. And that can, you know, be really challenging. One of the things I wish I had known about, I read a book about two and a half years ago, and I actually pulled it out because I thought you might ask. Yeah. And so this book here, it's the, um, the E-Myth Bookkeeper yep. book. Yep. And I, when I read this one, I felt like it was written for me. And I wish that I had this book when I had opened my uh, business. Some of the things I really enjoyed about it was even when it's just you, and I never had plans to have staff when I started this business or Mm. anything like that, Mm -hmm. and and now I do have staff, but to really create the business from the beginning that you are a team, and refer, something as simple as referring to it like we will do this Mm. instead of I will do this. So I was solo practitioner for 20 years, and Mm -hmm. so when I took that leap, from solo, you know, to staff, it was really hard for me to start using that we word. You know, mm-hmm. it was all about I, I'll do this, you yeah. know, that sort of thing. And so I wish I had started that from the very beginning. And then also, um, the, the same idea is documenting what, I, I wish I had started sooner documenting what it was mm-hmm. that I would do for each client, because as you grow, it gets hard to keep all of that in your head. And so you need to come up with some kind of a system so that you don't forget anything. I mean, you certainly wouldn't want to forget anything, but also that it's consistent. You know, Mm -hmm. like the reports you maybe give somebody at the end of the year, this year, that next year they're the same layout and that sort of a thing, because you build expectation, you know, instead of changing what you're doing all the time. Mm -hmm, mm mm-hmm okay well here's a you know let's fill in some of the pieces here where are you now you know you're 20 years solo tell us a little bit about your business right now how is it different from when you first started well it's very different so about four and a half years ago I hired my first employee Mm -hmm. and it was a really big step and I was really afraid Mm -hmm. um, that what if it didn't work out But I also realized I needed to do something different because I had reached a point where basically my revenue had leveled out. Mm -hmm. You only have so much time in a day. And it's it's like I couldn't really grow. I was really stuck at a number that I couldn't get past. And I was tired, you know. Um, It it was a lot of stress. Like it was difficult to take a vacation Mm -hmm. or to be able to turn it off. Yeah. And I really knew that, like, for my own, you know, like, well-being, Sanity. that I need, you know, <laughs> and I needed to share this with someone. One of my friends, her mother had gotten ill, and and that was, like, a big concern of mine. What if there was some kind of family emergency, mm. and I have these clients that are depending just on me, but, you know, they're 
potentially at some point in my future, there could be, you know, a need that someone in my family needed, you know, to, to help them. How, like, how would that work? Because I didn't want to disappoint my clients. And, um, but also, family comes first, you know. So, yeah. like, how do you, how do you really, um, you know, bring balance to that? So that was one of the things that really helped me, I guess, to take that leap of faith mm -hmm. and to hire my first employee. And so mm -hmm. she's still with me, the mm -hmm. first employee, and it's turned out really well, but it was really a journey that we took together. Mm -hmm. I had to learn how to be a team player, you know, mm -hmm. instead of it all being all about, oh, I'll do this and I'll do that. Mm -hmm. And it took a lot of time because I hadn't done that documentation and so forth, you know, right. we came up with together that would work so that we would know you know what um, what each other were doing and so I had her you know just the one employee for about two years mm -hmm. and I hired another employee because I thought this is going so good you yeah. know I'm ready to <laughs> rent ready out and hire another person and again I wish I had that book be mm -hmm. I mean because I have no idea at what point our like, is your revenue high enough that you mm. could actually support another person? Right. So I hired employee number two too soon. Mm. And so it, it didn't work out, mm -hmm. um, it, but it was very painful. I think she was with me for four months. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it wasn't sustainable. Mm -hmm. And so so then, you know, then we went back to the two of us. And I'm like, I don't like it, you know, just the two of us. <laughs> and then... Um, and then the following year, just by accident, my uh, the the first employee, she had to take some unexpected time off um, mm. because um, family, you know, like family emergency sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And so it happened to be that my my daughter was available, and I said, "Hey, could you help out? You know, to go you know go to go do the bank deposit and pick up the mail and blah blah blah." And so it just happened that that worked out very well. It mm -hmm. was, you know, just like for a one or a two week fix, you know, mm -hmm. kind of thing. But it ended up being that I hired her. And so now she's um, working with me. And then about a year ago, I hired another person. So, you mm -hmm. know, so now I've got three employees. Mm. So that's where I went from someone who thought I would never have employees yeah. that I've got three now. Yep. And if I've learned anything, it's even though I still do it, I think. Never say never, because then it, you'll do it. Now, are all three of these employees part-time, full-time? What's the status? So they're all part-time, mm -hmm. and Good. they all work um, virtually. So mm -hmm. they're all set up in, you know, um, in their own homes. And so we've created systems to be able to work together. So we, you know, we do um, web calls. Like, mm. every day I'm talking to, you know, to them, we might be chatting online, or we might just hop on and sh do a share screen or something of that sort. Hmm. I also have a weekly meeting with each of the employees. So one they on have one? a one-on-one. -on -one. So uh, they okay. each have an hour um, with me every yeah every week, and so that's really helped because if they have issues or you know or questions, we try to defer everything to that time mm -hmm. so that they're. Mm -hmm. you know, not constantly bombarding me, but that I'm also there to support them mm -hmm. as well and to make sure that things are, you know, being being done, you know, to the way that, you know, I would like it to be done. So, see, now I have lots of questions. Um, so were you, with each of your employees, has it always been a virtual relationship, or when you hired that first employee, was she in your home with you? So when I hired the first employee for about the first month or two, she actually did come and and I trained her, you know, and she worked mm -hmm. at my house. Mm -hmm. And but then after that, she was virtual, and she would come once a week for a couple hours because there were certain things that were physically in my home office right. that she would take care of. So she would come for you know like two hours a week or something, take care of those, and the rest of the time she would you know be doing it from her own home mm -hmm. and then with my daughter now she comes and she works one day a week um here at the house mm -hmm. with me. and so we do our meeting when she's here 
she mm-hmm. takes care of all those things that she needed to physically be here. Right. But it's just worked out well for us, you mm-hmm. know. So one of the days that she works, she works from home. And then my third employee, she lives about two and a half hours away. Uh, so I've only met her in person a handful of times. Wow. So tell me a little bit about this as well, the transition. When you first started your bookkeeping business, did you actually go to your client locations or did you always work virtually? How did that all work? Because it was, you know, quite a few years ago. (laughs) So I did go to, for the most part, to clients. Mm -hmm. Um, Depending on the project that I might be doing, I did have some clients that I would go pick up the you know, mm-hmm. like the paperwork, let's right. say, bring it back and, and do it from home and then, you know, go yep, back. That's and, what I did. Yep. You know, those sorts of things. I have a lot of clients. They were once a month clients. Mm. You know, I'd go every month, do all their reconciliations. Some that were every week. But, you know, it was a lot of work driving, you know, from mm-hmm. client to client. And where I live, there's really bad traffic. Mm-hmm. And I didn't enjoy traffic. <laughs> and, yeah, so... Over the years, probably about 15 years ago, I had a really big change where I started using hosted QuickBooks. Mm-hmm. And that's when that was brand new, like nobody had heard of it. Mm-hmm. And that transformed my business when I did that ah. because now I was able to do the bulk of the work, you know, remotely. But it mm-hmm. was actually when I met Gabrielle <laughs> uh, four and a half years ago, I think, or so. Yeah, some, yeah so, something like that. So um, when you introduced yourself to me, so we had been at a conference and we, you know, sat next to each other and then after the session was over, we chatted a little bit. And what I remember, and I came back from that conference was what you had said, you had introduced yourself as being 100% virtual. Right. And at that time, I was probably 80% uh, virtual, mm-hmm. maybe 85. I had just maybe three three or four clients that I actually still went to. Mm-hmm. But when you said that, I'm 100% virtual, I came away from that and I thought, wow, how come I'm not? <laughs> Seriously, mm-hmm. because I was almost there. I had the tools to be right. there. It was more the clients liked it for mm-hmm. me to come. Right, and right. And so, so over the next, I don't know, six to nine months, I changed that. So the clients that I was going to, I just said, you know, we're making the transition. We're going to be doing this, you know, virtually from here on out. Mm-hmm. Brought in tools, you know, so right. that I was able to do it. A few people were reluctant, really reluctant. Mm-hmm. And I just, let's just give it a try and see how it goes. Yeah. And it worked out, you know, really well. And then since then, I've had a few clients from time to time where, you know, they felt like they really needed to have somebody physically mm-hmm. on site. Mm-hmm. And how do and you deal so, with that? So either it's just like, okay, then we're not a good fit. You know, sometimes that's a situation. Yeah. Or I ask them if they want to go ahead and try out the tools, you know, that we use to see how this goes, you know, before they make a decision. And oftentimes, you know, they love it. I mean, I remember this one woman, she was so reluctant. Mm-hmm. And I just had a call with her yesterday. And so now she's got everything all set up. She's clicked on her link. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, we're all set up. And it, it's beautiful. But she was so reluctant. She was someone who, who I actually knew personally. And mm-hmm. so it was some pressure. Because yeah. she's like, well, can't you come? And she probably lives one mile from my house so it mm-hmm. wasn't about distance but it's right. like no that's just not how I work right and so you know we were up we were able I said just give it a try and it works really well so that's one of those things like from the beginning like when you ask think about what's important to you right you know what are the um you know like what are the parameters that you're going to set in place and for me one of the parameters is that we're going to be working virtually yeah yeah, excellent, excellent point. Now, also, we raise a few things we've thrown out that you've been named the Zero Bookkeeping Partner of the Year in the U.S., but you were before, when you were first mostly virtual doing hosted QuickBooks desktop, uh-huh. right? Tell us about that journey. How did you go, for, and do you still support QuickBooks? Okay. So um, I did build a business on QuickBooks Desktop, mostly virtually, mm-hmm. and and even though I liked many things about QuickBooks, for a very long time I was looking for a different solution, you know, something 
that would be web-based because mm -hmm. of the limitations of desktop software. Mm -hmm. So I probably was looking for about 10 years wow. and tried lots of different things. I mean, some things that were actually pretty cutting edge that, you know, long before it was normal to <laughs> you know, yeah. do it, you know, online uh, accounting software. I was mm -hmm. trying out things. I never really found anything that I loved until I tried out Zero. Mm. So um, with Zero, they came and did like around the country. They did some little like accounting, you know, roadshow. Um, yeah, a little roadshow thing. Mm -hmm. And so I went to that. And when I went to that the first one by lunch, I knew Zero was the one for me. I mm. fell in love with the product. And it was really interesting because even though I had really liked working in QuickBooks, mm -hmm. I actually love Zero. Mm -hmm. So I don't know mm -hmm. what I love QuickBooks, but I love Zero. <laughs> so there's, yeah. there's some things in Zero, just just the way that you do certain tasks, mm -hmm. it made it fun. Mm -hmm. it, it's colorful, just the way the interface is. It almost makes it like a game. Hmm. And I thought, wow, if this you know, if I could impart just a little bit of this to a client, that maybe this is fun. Yeah. I mean, maybe they weren't, wouldn't be quite as excited as me right. in doing this. But even if it was a little bit fun, yeah. Yeah. You know, that maybe they would be more inclined to, you know, do certain pieces of their bookkeeping. So that's what really hooked me, mm -hmm. um, that I had some kind of an emotional connection to mm -hmm. the software. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So tell us, let's talk a little bo more about a few of the tools. You told us a little story about clients being uh, resistant to going, and then when they did, they were happy. I've had that experience as well. Sometimes the ones who resist the most end up being the greatest right. lovers of it. Um, but what about tools? What tools do you use now? You do use Zero. Are you supporting any QuickBooks online? Because that's also a competitor that's really popular. Uh, what's the deal with that? And are there any other key tools that you're using as a virtual? You're 100% virtual right. now, right? Yes, I am. Yes. So, um, no, I do not have, we don't have any clients that are QuickBooks Online. We did have wow. some that made, wow. we made a decision about two years ago mm -hmm. to stop supporting the ones that we had. You know, mm -hmm. Because I wanted my team to be great at zero. Yes. Not be kind of good at QuickBooks Online and kind of good at zero. Mm -hmm. It's like you one and be really really good that's mm -hmm. my philosophy yep. uh, i still do have a handful of clients that are on the hosted quickbooks desktop mm -hmm. those are like clients we stopped accepting new quickbooks clients about two years ago wow so these are folks you know that we've worked for you know in the past yeah a long time so we're using a hosted provider for the quickbooks mm -hmm. we're obviously zero um, one of my favorite tools is uh we're using zoom Oh, and okay. so we use Zoom to communicate um, with the team. So mm -hmm. they have a chat feature, so we'll be chatting in there. Um, and then we'll do, uh, you know, web calls together. Mm -hmm. We also use it with clients. We use it with clients to do web calls. And then also to do training where we're doing share screen, you mm -hmm. know, and that sort of a thing. So that's like our current one to do like the virtual mm -hmm. uh, model. Then um, we are using a project management system called Aero. Mm -hmm. So we that to assign the tasks, you know, to the team members. Yeah. And then we have, you know, Gmail, and then we've got a Gmail shared calendar. Mm -hmm. So then my staff are actually able to either book an appointment for themselves with me, yep. or book an appointment with a client, mm -hmm. you know, or a mm -hmm. prospect with me as well. Oh, so you let them go straight to your Google Calendar to be able to book it. I let my, I let my um, staff go uh, to my uh, Okay, okay. <laughs> that works. That works. At the moment, that's how we do it. Mm -hmm. And then there's just the other tools that we use. One of the big ones for us was HubDoc. Uh -huh. And so that's one that it'll actually retrieve your bank right. statements. Mm -hmm. And then it really nice how it works with zero it'll actually push those into zero mm -hmm. so that was a big pain point for us chasing the bank statements um, and yeah. credit card statements for mm -hmm. clients so that automatically you know come in and then there's some other tools that we're using with clients as well mm -hmm. okay great yeah because everybody um you know trying to figure out what tools to use 
obviously it's helpful to hear that from someone like you who's successfully despite whatever bumps along the way i've been able to grow your practice from solo to now totally virtual and having a team too so that's great uh what would you say was like your biggest win that you've had in your path from where you started to where you are now do you have any like story or challenge that you really were able to overcome well let's see so there there were several things um that have helped some of them i actually already shared you know mm -hmm. like when i went to like books that was huge when i went right. to zero that was huge when i went to my first accounting conference mm -hmm. I couldn't believe, first of all, I was nervous to go right. because it's like, I don't know what I'm doing. It was actually across the country mm -hmm. where I went. What was your and first conference? I went to, um, it was Priest Leader Conference, but it was the oh. first leader conference that they did, and it was in Florida. Oh. So, yeah, so I went to Florida, and there was only maybe 100 people there. And I remember that like after the first day and I, you know, the content and the different people that I met, I thought, I found my people. I didn't know I had people. <laughs> yeah. And I was just so excited. Mm -hmm. And so I actually developed friendships from that first conference. I think it was like 13, 14 years ago. Wow. That I still keep, you know, in contact with. Mm -hmm. And so that was really huge to find out that there were resources. Yep. And and another thing is finding, you know, finding like a, other ones that are your people that you can have like a closer, you know, relationship with. Because I found that it was really difficult at times when I'd have a problem or I, I just didn't know how to deal with something. And like who am I I'm, who am I gonna ask you know my husband's not gonna really relate to what I'm asking yeah um, friends who aren't in the business you know they don't really know you know how to answer and so finding ones that I could reach out to and it's not that you're reaching out to them all the time mm -hmm. but you might have something like it's a burning issue it's like I just don't know what to do mm -hmm. and, you, and having someone that you can turn to and talk to that was really that was really big, you know, just to kind of build your own little support. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, it makes a big difference to just have that sounding board of someone who understands what you're facing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree completely. So if you had to start over again from scratch, what would you do differently? Well, that was then and this is now, so that's that, difficult. That's <laughs> true. Well, maybe let me rephrase it then. If you had to start over from scratch now, what would you do that okay. you didn't have to do back then because times were different? Well, I would not go to clients, like drive to their right. place. Mm -hmm. that, to me, that's just a big waste of time, especially mm -hmm. with the tools that we um, have available. Uh, I would also... I think I'd also have more of a plan with what, like the way that we offer our services. Most of our services are like ongoing monthly services mm -hmm. and they're packet based. Mm. And I do that in the beginning, you know, but kind of even have a, like a, a plan of, okay, you know, this is like what packages should look like. This is what I'm going to offer. So like now I always offer the, the uh, client three options. It's not mm. just the one I used to just offer them it was one and right. it would be a yes no and so now it's three mm -hmm. um, and then to set yourself up even if you don't think you're ever going to have employees to document all those things that you're doing for the client mm -hmm. uh, and also then to to be tracking so that you know when it changes so mm -hmm. you know the business's needs might change dramatically well what you're charging them should also you know, change, you know, at, you know, um, in relation to that. Yes. And it seems like that was something that in the past I was too slow to mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. And um, I wish that I had done that sooner. So do you have annual contracts with your clients now? Yeah, so I do. So the way that we do it now is um, we actually use practice ignition to, uh -huh. uh, to deliver the proposals, which in turn um, become an engagement letter, mm -hmm. and in there you put a date range. So, mm -hmm. the, so typically it'll be a year. Mm -hmm. um, one of the one of the tips that someone shared with me last year mm -hmm. is 
I thought, well, like it, it gets crazy. You have all these anniversary dates, you know, yes. for all the, the clients. How do you keep track of it? So now we just have two anniversary dates. They either um, renew on July first or January first. Mm. Okay, no in between. Mm -hmm. So when we're setting up a new client, you know, they'll they'll either go over the twelve months or under the twelve months. You know. Um, to have the anniversary date, and that helped because then I only need to really think about the renewals twice a year. That's a great and tip. Constantly be monitoring. That's like, oh, are they renewing? Oh, you know. Yeah. So, but yes. So now we have annual contracts, and then we're reviewing them um, with the client, mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, this is what we've been doing for you. You know, this is what we could do for you. Right. You know, and um, and that sort of thing. And, and I think it's good, a few of the clients, like we just recently were doing that in the past month, and they sort of resisted to having the conversation because they're like, I'm happy, you know, just right. do what you've been doing. And I said, like, right. well, we thought that it's really beneficial to have the conversation because over time things change, and we want to make sure we're doing everything we can, you know, to make you happy. Right. And, you know, and... It, you know, it needs to be something where both parties are happy, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a long conversation um, right. with them, but I think it's really good to touch base because what happens is then once you have a engagement like that, you're really not talking about money, mm -hmm. you know, as it goes on, which is wonderful, you know, because it's like we're going to do, you know, X and, you know, and you're going to pay us X. Um, and so I think it's really good to really look back at what it is that you're providing for them mm -hmm. because it can pick up on you that it's like, oh, wait a minute. Yes, we were managing, you know, this piece, but now, you know, this piece is yeah. doubled or that sort Scope of thing because mm -hmm. yeah, things happen without you realizing it. Yep. That's right. So that raises another question. Are you using value pricing now hourly or both? So it's, I haven't done anything hourly in quite some time. Good for you. So, yeah. So, you, so I am on the journey to do value pricing. I feel like, I aren't we all? I, <laughs> I would say what I do is fixed pricing. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. um, so again, it's where we have some basic packages put together yep. and, um, with options and some of the things that, like, change out between the different ones is like how often maybe we're doing um, a phone call you right know, so we'll do like a phone or a web call with a client um, how often we're doing reports you know are some clients we might be going in every week and coding everything for them mm -hmm. or other clients we might really only be going into their um, books once a month you know or, or even less frequent so just those kinds of options um, so I would say fixed pricing, mm -hmm. which I really enjoy the fact that we can get the whole money conversation out of the way in the yes. beginning yes. and then move on to doing the work. And then if we come into a situation where it seems like, oh, maybe we didn't charge quite enough, you know, right. but then we're always looking for ways to do this work, you know, most efficiently. Right. Um, we never want to sacrifice the quality of what mm -hmm. we're providing to the client, but always looking like within the team of ways that we can get better mm -hmm. at the work, you know, in the most efficient way possible. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you, Cindy. You've shared a lot of valuable, helpful information for sure. So, just to, uh, one more question I wanted to ask you was, what do you see coming for the future? Because our uh, profession is changing very quickly with the efficiencies coming in with the technology. What do you, how do you see that affecting your practice going forward? Well, I have thought about this, um, and I think that it will change, but this the journey that I've already taken has set me up to, okay. you know, to go with this change, I mean, it, it already has changed quite a bit, you know, mm -hmm. for us. It has. So even though 
the, you know, with technology, maybe clients can be doing a lot of the work that we used to do. Mm-hmm. Or even a machine can mm-hmm. do you know, some of the work that we used to. That's okay. Because you know what? That type of work, you know, that's being replaced right. wasn't really the most fun part of what we did. You know, right. sometimes it was a little bit boring, like doing data entry, for instance. Yep. But the interpretation of what that information needs, the looking at a balance sheet and knowing if something's out of whack. Mm-hmm. We kind of, as bookkeepers, take for granted yes. that anybody can notice that. Mm-hmm. That is not the case. So what the clients need has changed. And so what they're really needing is someone to guide them and make sure that they're on track. Yes. And then this whole thing, even like with regular reports, one of the things I absolutely love about Zero and changed from what we did at QuickBooks, mm-hmm. how we deliver our reports. So they mm-hmm. have a little section in Zero called reports, and yeah. then you can actually save, they call it publish reports. Uh-huh. So that's how we deliver, you know, monthly, quarterly, annual reports to our clients. And, um, and so, so, Building, I guess, building your business around, like, what those reports mean, mm-hmm. okay, to the Again, we take for granted as bookkeepers that anybody can read an income statement and, and know this. Well, right. that's not the case. Mm-hmm. And so that's the sort of information, you know, that they're wanting to have someone help them interpret what this information, you know, is telling them or what yeah. it should be telling them or what changes that they should be made. So really you can be a champion mm-hmm. for your clients. And yeah, you know, so so as far as what I see is I would like to see that me and my team just get better and better at what we're doing. Yeah. I mean right now we're really concentrating on delivering, you know, excellent service to all clients. Mm-hmm. And we have an issue, you know, looking at why is there an issue? Is it something in our procedures, you know, that we're not doing or should be, you know, should be doing? Or is it sometimes maybe it's that the client isn't a good fit for us either? You know, if they're not willing to get back to us or, right. you know, something of that sort. And so making this business really be something that I want to go to every day. Yes. That I want to, you know, I, I really want to be able to speak to the, you know, view clients as friends for the most mm-hmm. part. That, you know, that's the ideal, that it's a pleasure to speak with them and yes. you're able, you know, to assist them in some way. So that, that's the big thing. But then also I'm wanting to build my team so that they can take more responsibility. And, you know, that's one of the challenges when you start growing a business is that, you can't look at everything. Yeah. You'll drive yourself absolutely crazy. Yeah. But you need to empower your team so that they, you know, are able to deliver the same quality of work. Mm-hmm. Uh, be challenging at times, and then, um, you know, so that's the part that I'm working on now, just mm-hmm. to make the. Team. I have a great team. They mm-hmm. really are great, but there's always, you know, room for us to be even better. Yes, yes, that sounds great. Well, thank you, Cindy, so much. What a help. What a, what a journey that you've had. And it's, uh, it's very inspiring. You shared lots of great tips with us. And I appreciate that myself. You know, we're, we've been friends for a while now. <laughs> but, um, you know, hearing your journey, your, how the challenges you faced really is helpful um, because we can all see ourselves, but then also learn from the experiences that we haven't had yet and seeing how you handled it so that when they do come up, we can deal with it. So that was very helpful. And uh, I sure know that you are a champion of, uh, of zero. And then seeing how you've transitioned to it is inspiring as well. And, uh, and it's really been growing. So you've been an early adopter. You've really been a pioneer in all of this. Uh, so thank you so much for sharing it with us. What's the best way for someone to get a hold of you if they wanted to say thank you for this interview? So probably the best way would be if 
you went to our website, mm -hmm. which is um, www.bbbooksinc.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. We can call ourselves the BBB team. <laughs> and, um, and there's just like a little chat um, box on mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. That's probably the best way. Okay, excellent. And I'll post it on the blog underneath the interview as well. So thank you again. Yeah. All right, thank you. All right, take care. All right, bye.